For a time, there were two golden boys in Winnipeg, the one on top of the legislature and this one. Donnie Lalonde. He was a boxing phenom who went on to become a world champion. At the height of his career, he went the distance with boxing legend Sugar Ray Leonard. He may have lost, but he walked away from the match with a multi-million dollar paycheck. He was one of the great fighters and I guess he showed it tonight. And maybe that's where things began to go wrong for Donnie Lalonde. He tried his hand at land development, but when he finally left Canada in 2002, his businesses were headed for bankruptcy. Now, here in Malta, the latest country he calls home, Donnie Lalonde may be about to find fame once again, for a new reason. I would like to preface this with one convert, one point. Sure. Am I not the very first Panama Papers uh, subject to do a television interview that's related to this, of, of uh, what's it called, um, a public interest? Um, I think everybody else has said no comment. Yeah. Oh. I just want to make that clear. Okay. Also, I'm the one who's been hitting the head more than anybody for 27 years, so maybe that's why I'm here. Okay. Love Winnipeg, love the people in Winnipeg, I have many friends there, don't mean to diss anybody, but uh, I always wanted to just travel from when I was 15 years old. And, uh, Donnie Lalonde has been on the move for most of his life. His arrival in Malta, just the latest stop. Once again, he leaves behind a trail of failed businesses and angry clients. But it's those offshore companies in Panama that now may have people talking. And I have 100% no problem, whatever, with everything that went on in my life. Everything I did, I, I did with from the right heart. I did it in the right uh, spirit. And I tried to be fair, but also fair to myself. Like, you know, for example, like setting up a bus my businesses in a um, location that now is uh, controversial. The tax haven of Panama became big news recently when the list of offshore clients of law firm Mossack Fonseca became public. One of those clients, Donnie Lalonde, who by 2004 had already started registering companies offshore, even before his bankruptcy was finalized in Canada. He doesn't pay taxes anymore in Canada, he says, so he's got nothing to hide. Some people are abusing these structures. I'm, I'm like the epitome of the person they are set up for to do it honestly and integrally. I mean, I'm really happy that this all gets cleared up and people can stop stealing money from their citizens and robbing their countries by hiding money. So you yourself didn't do this in any way, shape or form to avoid paying taxes? It's called proper tax planning, right? It was to the tropical paradise of Costa Rica that Donnie Lalonde moved in 2002, leaving behind debts that would eventually total 1.4 million in Canada. He says he had just $11,000 to his name when he arrived here, but he also had a plan. I, I kind of always had that dream to go to Costa Rica and live on the beach. And then when I got there and I needed to make money, I thought, okay, create a pie, take my piece, share the rest with everybody else, make some money. One of those pies he created? A resort community called El Escape. It was to be a cowboy-themed community. Empty lots with the promise of electricity and water to come, each going for as much as $80,000. Daphne Bulert was a close friend of Lalonde's, and he offered her a chance to buy in at what sounded like a great price. I was never really financially stable enough to think I could, but he had a two-acre parcel of land that he could sell to me for $55,000 US. So, of course, I thought I was getting this amazing deal, and I think I, I was at that time. Al Brownsden owns a business in Port Coquitlam, B.C. He had no idea Lalonde had declared bankruptcy in Canada when he and his late wife dropped 80000 for a couple of hectares at El Escape. Huge decision. It's all the money we had. This is where we were going to, uh, you know, live in the summer in, in Vancouver and and be there in the in the winter. The lots were selling well, helped along by lush images like this. 
Nonetheless, deadlines came and went, and the lots still weren't close to being ready. Brownsden says he wasn't worried. I was in no hurry at the time. My children were young. I wasn't, I wasn't interested in building at that time, so there was no push from my side to, to expedite things. By 2007, Lalonde's estimated net worth was now 3 million U.S., at least some of it in those offshore companies. He and his wife lived here in this luxury housing development, and for a while, life seemed good. But in 2008, Costa Rica's hot real estate market turned stone cold when the world's economy took a dive. In Costa Rica, it went from, you couldn't keep your land because they were offering you so much money that you were a fool not to sell it, to you couldn't give it away. Literally, you couldn't give it away. No new money coming in meant no development. Daphne Bulert was anxious. She'd taken out a line of credit on her house to pay for the land. Her contract promised her the right to get her money back, and she wanted out. So I approached Donnie and I'd asked him if I could possibly get my money back. And so patiently I kept, uh, you know, I kept waiting. There's a lot of stalls involved I've found with uh, Donnie. There was always stalls of time. Al Brownsden wanted his money back too. He says he tried over and over to get in touch with Lalonde, but no luck. No return calls, no, no emails, no land coming my way, nothing being assigned to me. Everything was coming back to Donnie the Lawn, not uh, responding and not uh, dealing with anything, not following through with anything, not, just not delivering the land. So then people who said, oh, we went to Donnie Lalonde, we asked for our money back, and he said no. What do you say to I those say people? No. I said there was no money in the bank to give you. I didn't say no, you can't have it. Forty percent of El Escape investors who have requested their money, no, 40 percent of all the El Escape investors requested their money back and got their money back. Some also requested the money back and there's no money to give them. It's called insolvency. Al Brownston isn't buying that excuse, and he's angry. I understand things happen but have the decency and honor to stand up to me, answer my call, phone me, tell me what's going on, show me the books, uh, make good or show me why you can't. Don't hide, don't run, don't lie, don't disappear. I feel very betrayed. Um, I thought we had a, a wonderful friendship. I, I truly did and I feel duped completely taken advantage of. So your advice to Daphne then, stick with it? What do you think? I love you, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that you don't have that money and I can't wait for you to get it back. You're a sweetheart and it's just you got caught in the downturn. You bought right when the thing died. Sorry. On the company's Facebook page, there's no talk of insolvency, just lush images and the promise of a luxe retreat. In reality, one of the few houses to begin construction, Donnie Lalonde's, here at the Howler Ridge site. Last year, he abruptly left Costa Rica and landed in Malta. A group of investors is now trying to pursue legal action against him in Costa Rica. What would you say to investors back in Costa Rica who say, oh, he skipped the country because it got too hot? Like, what, what's, what would you say to those people? It's hot every day there. <laughs> Christy and I, when we decided to take our trip, we were sitting in our, our um, house, the one that just sold, but we was, it wasn't transferred yet. All the air conditioners were on and we were pouring sweat. I just looked at her and I said, are you ready to get out of here? She goes, yeah. I said, let's go. Things are cooler here in Malta, in no small way because those angry investors are on the other side of the ocean. There seems little doubt that Donnie Lalonde was a better boxer than a businessman. These days, he spends his time writing his memoirs and coaching a young boxer. He's confident the developments will go ahead, and he thinks the investors should just be patient. When will it be done, and how much will it cost? When will it be done, the day it's done, how much will it cost? The amount, what it costs, when we're done, we'll be able to tell you. No idea. Manana. Loosely translated, manana means tomorrow. But the question investors are asking, will tomorrow ever come? For CBC News, I'm Katie Nicholson in Malta.